Um, from what you have said about the state and your, what uh, the government is doing, it, it will actually be nice to go there one day and report on what you, the government is doing. You know, but um, when you talked about security, you talked about employment, um, and you talked about what you do to keep the people secure. But I do believe that for you to be able to do that, it has to do with the youths, with their education, with jobs. Without you don't do those two things. Now I understand that there's free education from what you have said in Ogun State. Yeah. So what how what's so the school level. what priority have you given to jobs, job creation in Ogun State? Well, uh, as I as I as I've said, number one thing that we did when we came in. The governor promised employing 10,000 and that he has done. But even at that, 10,000 out of the unemployed youth is still just... What's uh, the population of Ogo State? Ogo State is about 4.8 million people. And um, what would be the population of the youths? The youths, well, give or take, the youth will take about, will account for about Two or one point eight or two point two. Million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what do you think would be and the percentage of the people, the youth employed in Ogun State? No, you you don't have to base it based on the ten thousand. Some are employed, and the youths, some are you know still below employment age, but they are youths. Those who are old enough to yeah, those who are old enough to be employed are there. And you know, let me tell you what we now did. We told everybody when we want to do the 10,000 year, we told everybody to apply online. We set up what we call Ogun Employment Pool so that everybody employed online. We captured, we want to really have the figure, have the idea. And then we have about 80 something thousand initially. Youths on the Youths, yeah, that applied. Unemployed. You know, you cannot really say everybody on a but some have some job they want. A change. Part time. Yeah. Before oh, yes. Yeah. But we have eighty something. We employ ten thousand. And what we do is, from that pool, if any company like some company coming to Ogun State as part of our developmental and employment generation, we just go into this pool and see their qualifications and everything, mm -hmm. and then we recommend them and put them into this company. And that has been ongoing. So sometimes employment go on in Ogun State and people they don't just say, Oh yeah, the government is employing, ah they called my friend. Well it is not that government is putting them in the civil service. Mm -hmm. But because what we did is we need to have this you have a data. data. So you put you, you pull yes. from there from the data. You don't need to know anybody. No. You don't need to know anybody. You look so at you the don't really just look at the qualifications and everything. Mm -hmm. And then you'll be called for interview. Then it depends on if you are employable, if you have this skill, you will get it. So a lot of people have gotten job through this and that is the way. We want to know them. If there's any training opportunity, we call people for training and this we are doing so that we manage them. Yeah. So that is what we're doing in the area of employment and everything. And in the area of security, I said it, since we know all these people, Ogun State youth, Ogun State people, they are not, you know, uh, the bad type, although the, um, the high do hand is devil's workshop, but even at that, we, we are trying, we are managing ourselves. Yeah. Um, why I'm asking you all these questions is, I'm one of those that believe that we should be looking at individuals now. Because Nigerian politics is um, so deplorable that you can't actually look at the political party, parties anymore. You look at what individuals are bringing. And I'm trying to bring out something from you. I'm trying to see why you should be allowed to remain and why people should follow you. 
That was what we said about Oshomole when it was time for election. That Oshomole, you might not like him, you might not be a politician, but Oshomole has proved himself. So why don't we vote for him? You know, those are the kind of people I'm trying to see that, oh, the right honorable um, Tola Banjo is the deputy speaker of the State House of Assembly. Does he deserve it? And should we repose our confidence on him? Well, uh, what you're saying now is, is exactly what I said even way back in 2007. Forget party, look at personalities. I use my personalities. I put my name forward. I put it online and people never have for once any regrets that we voted for him. If they do, 2007, they will not do the same in 2011. And they did teach en masse. I told you, the record is there. I did not lose in any polling unit. In 98 polling units. If you, if you add the, the score of other major uh, candidates together, all of them is not up to mine. So that shows you that the trust and the confidence they have in me. And I've tried my best. If you're asking me that, can I just run my uh, whatever that I've done, if time will permit, like I took it upon myself to really make sure that I get close to my people. That is number one thing you can do to your people, be in their midst. A community them, man. Community person. Get to know them. Let them see you. Don't be that the day you are sworn in, you stay back in the capital and come back in 2015 January and start campaigning. No, you always see me there. Even when they have their functions, they give you invitation, you go. That is just on personality level, developmental level. I've embarked on projects that touches everybody, irrespective of your religion, tribe. Uh, party, political affiliation, or anything. I just do it. Like the S center I talked about, there won't be segregation, there won't be discrimination. Anybody can go there. And let me tell you what reinforced the idea. When I first got elected, my first point of call was I paid a visit to my constituency and I went around all the health, uh, uh, the hospitals, the health centers and everything where I discover most of the problems and that is what I do. I went there and I went back to my you know joint board and I'll go and say okay this is what and what they needed and I went to give them. I'll tell you one scenario in 2007 when I was campaigning there was this uh, boy who was riding a Okada and then he dropped a passenger I was on the other side of the road. He wanted to, you know, continue his journey. He just fell and twisted his ankle. And that was it. It was just the people, go, ah, yeah, and everything. I took him in my car, took him down to General Hospital. When we got there, it was like, you have to buy this, you have to do this. Here. And that day, I just, something just came into me that, why will that not be a money that if something happened because it is called an accident or emergency you never prepare for it you don't know when it will happen so when i got in i went to the hospital i went back after giving them some of the relief materials the generators the bed sheet the mattresses and everything and i put money down in the accident and emergency that in case anybody comes in like you can imagine a schoolboy going, you know, could get knocked down by Okada or Fel and everything. Even before they get in touch with the parent, they can take from that money. I think that day it was around two hundred thousand, yeah, to two twenty-five. That was eventually, you know, pulled down and said, "I will come back and I will increase this." I went back in the hospital and I went to another one. I gave them generators, gave them mattresses, gave them. Um, Beshes and everything, so that the the comfort and everything will be there. So when I got to this particular one, I said, "Well, you don't need anything that to be relocated. This place is not even what to be called." So because somebody just gave them that place is a makeshift and everything, and thank God, if for in that area where I 
promise in 2007 that we do. I just said, this plus my promise makes this. So that is what really reinforced. We are just a year in the office. I'm, I'm almost, you know, I tell you, what well, my target is October first by because we are commissioning, we are opening that maternity centre. That will be my own Independence Day gift to the people of my constituency, and another one for them in the market where we have uh, a toilet and a shower, about six weeks and everything for them. So I want to commission everything by this October first. It will be ready for use, and uh, in the area of security. I've been there for my people every time. Even the the vigilante in Jabore that people say they relegated to the background. I brought them to the forefront, gave them recognition and everything. Even if I cannot afford to buy them uh, a patrol truck now and everything, as I did it to the police, I cannot afford to buy them truck now. But I took two of their vehicles that are grounded and repaired it. So that we hate their jobs. The vigilantes were giving uh, some bikes by me so that they can move from one point to the other. So all this one is doing to make sure we have um, a secured environment. And we thank God it's working. Okay, that's that's very good. Um, I just hope that that's what every other person who are representing the people, that's what they're doing. Um, well, I can't speak for myself, but I know yes, a, I a, lot, a lot of ACN members in Ogun State, we are all doing fantastic yeah. you know, job yes. because we have the mandate to serve our people. Yeah, from what, you, from what you're saying and from the way you have been um, responsive to your people, I do think that you have uh, a burning desire in you, a desire to realize something. And what is that really that you are trying to achieve? What is that that you've seen that you think that if I do have the opportunity, I would need to do this? You see, number one, and it depends on who the head is. No matter how well ambitious or whatever you are as a follower or as a subordinate, you cannot, in most cases, just debate or do aside what the boss or what the head is doing. So, if you see your governor, we've come a long way, and I know what he wants for his people, the desire in him, you know. You know the vision. Yes, yes. The insatiable desire to make sure he put the smile in the face of the people, he, he eradicate poverty, he wants it done as if it should have been done yesterday. And then, there can be difference. So that is why you see the team, everybody, we now into what we call open standard and everything we do. We don't want to do something that come when we finish all this thing I'm talking about. You will wonder why would somebody come and build a like almost a marble toilet in the market? But I know my governor will not do less. That is what we call open standard and that is it is in everybody now. He will tell you. You just do it or not. Go and see the quality of the roads. Go and see the what the uh, the model schools we are building. Go and see the hospitals. You know, uh, even those that were uh, refurbished and everything, and the new one we are building. You see the standard in everything. Go and look at the APC. So we have on ground now what we call open standard, and the desire to help our people is just. So he's, the governor is showing real leadership. Oh, very well, very well. Leadership by example. By example, real by example. And this is a man like you wonder when he sleeps, wake up early there, he attends to call and he knows who it, it's accessible. People send him text, this is happening, that is happening, and then on everybody's phone you just see Piam, he send it to you, if it affects you, he send it to <coughs> Anybody, even as I'm here, I still got text about some things and everything that I still need to act upon. Okay. Well, let's look at Nigerians in diaspora. Mm. Being someone who has traveled far and wide and looking at the global situation at the moment, a lot of Nigerians want to come back home. What would you advise them and how would you advise them because um, from our own little part, 
I don't know if I'm wrong, but uh, being someone in the media, I have always tried to say that when we want to go back home, we probably should think about maybe empowering ourselves, getting more trainings, not just going to school, looking at something that can be your benefit when you do get back home. But what are some of those things that our people here should try to do before coming back home? Oh, well, thank you. This is very important. You see, one thing I keep telling people ever since, yes, I traveled out of Nigeria, I've been to some part of the countries and see things the way she be done. But one thing that keep ringing bell in my head is that you cannot solve your problem by running away from it. You have to tackle the problem. You have to face it head long. That is how you solve a problem. If you have a problem and you run away from it, the problem will still be there waiting for you when you come back. So when Nigerians tell me, oh, I'm going abroad, I'm going this, I'm going that, forget that. Your problem that you are saying is still back there. You just have to face it. Now, yeah, we look for a uh, better life. You got it. You're looking for comfort. You're looking for everything. Yeah. You can go back home. You can come back. All you just need to is, first of all, know what you know. And that is what you want to do. Don't let it be. Somebody come and tell you in the morning, oh, if you get to Nigeria, it's spare parts. And you just believe, okay, when I go to Nigeria, it's spare part. And around 12 p.m., somebody came again and said, oh my God, if you get to Nigeria, it's just ice cream. So I just said, oh, it's ice cream. I'm going to say. So a lot of people in diaspora don't really know. They just listen to people and they keep asking you, <clears throat> what can I do? What can I do? You need to know yourself. And if you make up your mind that this is what I know, this is what I want to do, then concentrate on that. Research into that. If you find out yourself that is good, that is what you can do or you can go on. If it is by yourself that you find out through your research and everything that you no, know, these are there are a lot of shortcomings in what I think I want to do, you can drop it. Don't let it be. Somebody will come and tell you. Oh, that is what you want to go and do. You won't make it. No, I'm telling you, you can't make it. And because of that, it has not even given you any substantial proof. Any reason why you won't make it. And you just said, ah, they said I won't make it. You drop that, you start all over looking well, for somebody it. somebody say you don't need all this. If you go to Nigeria, it is who you know. You get contract, you're a millionaire, and you don't... Maybe you were doing something you don't really that. need. I'm coming to that. Another thing, problem of people with diaspora is, they want to get to it from the top. They believe, yeah, the life they live here and everything. But my brother, you get to it from the bottom, you climb up. If it is you're looking for somebody, yeah, it happens, it, it work out for infinitesimally small number of people that you get it that way. But to a lot of people, you have to start from the scratch. Get something doing, it is from the process that people will see that, oh, you know how to do this thing, get me that person. I'll tell you an instance, where I was in Nigeria and I keep coming, and we were coming even before the government became, you know, we were traveling and we saw this boy, no, it's not a boy, a woman selling plantain chips in just raw form in the raw and everything. We bought it down. And the thing was so nice and then, that is when you know a leader and the wife of the secretary just called. This woman, if given opportunity, can do better. I just said, okay, get that woman for me. And she gave her advice that what you need is packaging, is branding. And I said, I can only afford this Lilo and everything. Just I said, okay, don't worry. And from there, just okay, take this, add to your capital. He gave her idea, you know, that is where ingenuity. And for somebody, high class there, meeting is all you know helping and everything and today i tell you a lot of people anytime you have to book for that planting it's not that you're just working now so you start somewhere somebody will see what you are doing and know you know how to do it and they will come to you and they'll come for you and from there you will move but we are waiting for the day somebody will need what you know 
and even without knowing you before, without seeing you, without anybody saying you know how to do it, they will just come and say, come and go and do this for us. No. So our advice, home is the best. Nigeria is where it's happening now. Even a lot of all these Europeans, Americans are coming to Nigeria to exploit the economy. We have one thing going for us, we have the population. Any business you set up in Nigeria and you have 1% of the population patronizing you, then. Well, people say Nigerians who go, come, go back to Nigeria and want to start something, there's this complaint that there's too much class thing in Nigeria. You know, um, Nigerians in diaspora are probably used to living simple life, not having this wanting to live. Like, for example, when people go to Nigeria, they talk about the fact that when you go to see somebody and you don't have one big jeep driving into the compound, they won't let you see the person. And um, um, sometimes if you don't know the person, they won't let you see the person. There are, there's this thing of class that people talk about that is difficult and it's frustrating when you go to Nigeria. See, see, this you are talking about did not just start yesterday. Hmm. It's been there even before you come abroad. So why are you complaining about it now? It's been there. Our father lived with it. Our forefather lived with it. Our great grandfather lived with this and they survived. Why would that now be a problem or obstacle? You need to surmount it. It is simple. The person that doesn't want to see you probably is not yet ready to see or he is not yet is not he doesn't need you at that time. If he needs you, even if you were working barefooted and you had the solution to his problem. You have to make him want him. Yes. You have to you have to do something. You don't go there. See what well, a lot of people are realizing in Nigeria that there are people yes I quite agree because of the trust a friend of mine told me one story said there was this guy who was trying to get a job and they gave him the job eventually but you know what the man the company they were giving him money based on the value of the car he's bringing when they give him money based on the car yes some people have that mentality so when you just look at that they give you value of that money but i can tell you there are so many things that you start with i was talking to somebody today if you do something like there was a time we were doing a lot of beautification and yeah. everything in open state now flower. and the governor just said one day who knows this guy if you're going to this side before you turn left and everybody get the guy that owns that garden place that should come and do one the guy never applied the guy never do anything but because they've seen what he displayed what he can do so he was just say the government said just say go there get whoever is there let's see if he's the one that is in there so if you come up it does not even we don't know if he's black or white, white or tall does he live on the street does he have any cars come forth don't let anybody just tell you ah, if you don't have jeep if you don't have this well riding good cars is is good it, it might give you a level of leverage when you get to some level but it's not just the ultimate what you know and how you can do it versus the Right, Honorable Tola Banjo, it's been a pleasure talking to you and I want to thank you for coming. Um, Where viewers, we've been talking to Right, Honorable Tola Banjo. Like we said before, he is the Deputy Speaker of Ogun State House of Assembly. He's one of us. He's somebody that has inspired so many youths all over. Talking to him today, I believe, has been a blessing. You've heard, you've listened to him, you've heard from him. And until next week, when we come your way again, thank you. <laughs>